Hey friends, welcome back to Acre Homestead. I spent all morning and early afternoon doing computer work, getting those things done that I just would rather not do so that we can have a really fun afternoon and evening in the kitchen, which is where I would rather spend my time. It's Taco Tuesday, so we're gonna make some homemade flour tortillas, a couple different condiments and toppings, and we're just gonna make some really, really yummy tacos. But before I do that, I've got three baskets, well, two baskets of laundry that need to be folded, and I have some a load of laundry in the dryer. So even though all I wanna do is get in the kitchen and spend the afternoon in the kitchen, I figured let's get this chore done first so we can get it out of the way and then we can reward ourselves by spending time in the kitchen. Plus I also am completely out of dishcloths and I have a hard time cooking without dishcloths because you know me, I make a mess and I need to be able to wipe them up. So we're gonna take, I'm gonna give myself maybe 30 minutes to get all this laundry folded. Is that being too ambitious? I don't know, but we are gonna go ahead and get to it. We're just gonna get right into it. So I like to sort things by light things with light things. So when it comes to folding, I can fold all my leggings, all the dishcloths. I can hang up my different clothes quickly. I probably should do this before I put it in the washer, but I'm really bad about doing that. For about the last week or so, Josh and I have been struggling with some head cold that kind of went around our house. And as of today, we are probably at 90%. So because I had done some cooking with some different soups and things, I really haven't had to be in the kitchen for quite some time. And that's kind of why I'm jonesing to get in there and get back to it. And I haven't made homemade flour tortillas in forever. I used to make them all the time. I've never made them to where they turned out perfectly. But this morning I took a little bit of time and I did a bunch of research and I found a recipe that had so many good reviews, so we are going to attempt this recipe, and I'm excited to see if we can have them turn out really, really well today. So after being under the weather for about five days, we are finally feeling better, which is so awesome. But some of these, you know, household things kind of got put to the wayside, so it's time to tackle these things before we can start having some fun in the kitchen again. I kind of like to get the things out of the way that I don't want to do so that I can reward myself with having fun. So getting caught back up on some of these household chores is something that just needs to be done. Surprisingly, we didn't get too far behind, but there were definitely things that needed my attention. And that is what we are taking care of today. Now, because we weren't feeling good for a total of about a week, it kind of spread. I started feeling sick and then Josh got sick and it was just, you know, that's how it goes through households sometimes. And so we had been enjoying soup for the last three meals that I've cooked and we're a little souped out. We enjoy soup, but soup for dinner, soup for lunch, for three meals. Well, you know how I cook. I cook a bigger batch and then we eat it for leftovers and stuff like that. So basically for the last week we've been having soup and we are ready to have some tacos. <laughs> we usually have tacos probably three or four times a month and we haven't had them in forever. So that was definitely why I was like, you know what, now that we feel better, it is time to make some scrumptious tacos. And I thought that it would be fun to challenge myself to try to make the homemade tortillas because I have, I used to make them all the time, but I never had a really, really good recipe. And so I really wanted to try and attempt to master the flour tortilla. I have made corn tortillas and those are pretty good, but Josh and I definitely prefer flour tortillas over corn. And so that is the goal today is try to master a skill that I have never been able to master. It feels good. One of my favorite things to fold are these dishcloths because it just feels good to stack up a big stack of dishcloths. And then we're gonna be able to put these in the drawer in the kitchen and knowing that we are going to probably make a bunch of messes and be able to use them is a good feeling. And here we have it. We got everything folded. All three of those loads are folded. Now I am going to put everything away before I get to go play in the kitchen. 
We got the laundry all taken care of. That laundry room is clean. The laundry is put away. That didn't take any more than 30 minutes. So I'm glad I kind of forced myself, in other words, to get it taken care of. So now we can enjoy the rest of our day in the kitchen knowing that we have laundry for the rest of the week. So I'm just gonna get a couple things put away. I'm also gonna top off my tea here. Tea has been, I've been really enjoying tea, even though it's been in the 80s around here, which is crazy for us. We normally would have rain and cold at this point, but we've been in the 80s, and so it's not really feeling like fall. So I need to drink tea so that I can make it feel like autumn around here. Speaking of fall, we're gonna process some of these pumpkins today too, I think, because I do want to make some pumpkin recipes coming up. But first what I wanna do is get our tortilla dough going, because that needs to rest for just a little bit. In the past, when I made homemade tortillas, and I used to make them all the time, like I said, but I never could get them super, super soft. And the recipes I used called for a fat that was solid at room temperature. So either lard, butter, something like that. And this recipe that we're using today calls for a liquid fat at room temperature. So we're gonna use a light olive oil today, but you could use vegetable oil, peanut oil, canola oil, whatever oil you like to cook with. So I'm thinking that the liquid oil at room temperature might be the key to a really soft, pliable tortilla because it's liquid at room temperature, so it'd be soft at room temperature. I don't know, we're gonna find out together. So in my bowl, I just put two, uh, three cups of all-purpose flour, and now we're gonna put a teaspoon of salt. And then this is another ingredient I've never put in my tortillas, I don't think. It's been so long since I made them, I can't remember. But it's baking powder, and this calls for one teaspoon. And I have my quarter teaspoon out, so I have to put four of these in here. And we're gonna whisk these three ingredients together. I can link this recipe down in the description box for you. So then it says we need to make a well, and we're gonna add one cup of very warm water. So this is my tea kettle. It's not boiling anymore, but it's pretty hot. So we're gonna add one cup of that, and we're gonna add a third of a cup of our oil of choice. And that's it, mix those simple ingredients together. Now we're gonna get in here and we're gonna start kneading this dough. I always love the feel of tortilla dough with that warm water. It does something to the flour that just gives it a really interesting, pleasant texture. I'm gonna put it on the counter and I'm gonna knead it just a few times on the counter until we get a really soft, supple dough. You can see how nice and soft this is. I think this is exactly what we're going for. I'm gonna knead it a couple more times. Get it into a nice ball. Put it back in our bowl. I think I'm gonna put a little bit of olive oil in the bottom, just so that nothing dries out. And then we're gonna let this rest. And now we're gonna go on to the next thing, which is getting some pumpkins roasting because we might as well have the oven and something passively going and working for us while we then prep some of the different sides that we're gonna have to go along with dinner tonight. I'm glad we're getting to this because this pumpkin, ooh, and this butternut squash is showing some signs that this is not gonna last really long in long-term storage. There are some different blemishes and things on this pumpkin that just make me believe that it's the best thing that we get to it today and this butternut squash is already kind of shriveling. It's not even soft to the touch, but it, it just looks odd to me. So today will be the day that we will save these from anything going wrong with them. This is a big Cinderella pumpkin. This was the biggest pumpkin we grew this year, and I couldn't be more proud of it. So to roast a pumpkin, they sell these at the store. These are, Cinderella pumpkins are a really common pumpkin for decorating. And so you could still go out and buy yourself a pumpkin 
And you might already have one on your porch. And when you're done with the decorating of it, you could cut it up instead of throwing it away or composting it. And you could cook it up so that you can have some really delicious fall desserts, curries, all sorts of pumpkin pasta, all sorts of different yummy recipes. It looks perfect on the inside and it smells so delicious. So all you have to do is cut it in half and then scoop out the inside bits. We're gonna give these inside yummy bits to the chickens. And I just learned that pumpkin seeds and squash seeds are a natural dewormer for uh, chickens. So that's good. So it's kind of a win, win, win. I have the oven preheating to 350 degrees. I'm gonna cook this cut side up. I just have my big roasting pan here. Most people cook their squash cut side down, but I like my squash to dry out a little bit and that's why I cook it cut side up because home processed pumpkin can be have a lot more moisture to it than store-bought canned pumpkin. So one way to try to combat that is to have it evaporate in the oven just a little bit and that's our goal with that. So I'm gonna get these other two. I have four more squash, but those are decorating my front porch from the garden. So we will, and those are their sweet meat, which are my favorite squash actually to grow for pumpkin puree. But those are decorating my porch, like I said, and I want them to be out there. They're a lot healthier of a looking squash. They're not gonna go bad on me. So once I'm done with the decoration, we'll process them and use them in recipes. For the butternut squash, I'm just gonna cut it in half like this and we'll roast it like this. I'm probably gonna do this in a different container because that one's completely full. All right, that was easy enough. So I need to adjust my oven racks a little bit. We're gonna use that to cook the tortillas. That's gonna take probably an hour to cook. So the butternut squash is not going to fit in the oven. So I'm just gonna put this in a bag, we'll throw it in the fridge, and next time I have the oven going, I'll roast these up. But I wanna get out a couple things for some of the other recipes we're gonna to make to top our tacos with. I have a couple avocados. I think they might be bad. Avocados are one of those hard things that you buy them and sometimes I get to them and then sometimes I don't and then I feel really guilty. We have some red cabbage. We're gonna make a cabbage slaw. Let's see. Oh, we have some tomatillos we need to deal with. So maybe we'll make a sauce out of those. I have some limes and lemons. We're gonna use those and some peppers. So we're still pulling stuff out from the garden because these peppers are from the garden. Okay. I feel a little bit like I am on the show Chopped because I have all these ingredients and a lot of them are from the garden, which is amazing, a blessing, but I don't really know what flavor profiles I wanna go to. Do I want like a cilantro lime chicken? But if I'm gonna make a coleslaw topping, do I wanna make that really limey and then maybe make the chicken more of like a, a peppery chipotle style? Maybe we'll do that. This is just me thinking out loud because this is what we have. We have red cabbage from the garden, tomatillos from the garden that need to be used. Out of the four avocados, I had two that were good. We have some sad looking limes, a couple lemons, some peppers, and some onions and I cut, there was a bad spot on this onion. So we are gonna make a honey, let's do this. Let's make, I'm totally making this up. Let's make a honey lime tomatillo slaw with some avocado in it, onions in it. And then we will make some sort of chipotle spicy meat because I did thaw out some chicken so we can cook up the chicken. So I think that'll be good. It'll be a contrast between like the peppery heat of the chicken and the freshness of the coleslaw. I'm still thinking through this 
dressing that I want to put on the coleslaw. I know the base is going to be tomatillos because that's what I have. So let's get these washed up first. That one needs to be given to the chickens. If you're wondering why you see a bunch of wood chips on my arm, it's because I brought a bunch of goodies out to the chickens. I tripped and fell and apparently I brought in a bunch of wood chips. So I put my tomatillos on a little baking sheet and I'm gonna go ahead and put some of these peppers. I already washed these peppers on here too. I'm gonna just take out some of these little seeds, throw these on here. I preheated the oven to 425 degrees and we're gonna get this roasting. This is gonna be the base for our dressing for our coleslaw. So now that we have the roaster going and we have our base for our coleslaw dressing, let's go ahead and get our cabbage cut up. It's a beautiful cabbage, homegrown, small, but it's gonna eat and it's gonna be delicious. I'm gonna cut this really thinly, as thin as I can. So I think I'm gonna get enough coleslaw from this one humble head of cabbage and these two little tiny ones will make a appropriate amount of coleslaw for another day. So we're gonna put these ones back in the fridge and we'll enjoy them a different day. Goodness friends, I am so sorry about that piece of wood chip that is just on my arm. I can't even, <laughs> I just can't, I am so sorry. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing with this half an onion. I'm gonna cut it as thinly as I can so that it kind of mimics that shape. I think I'm gonna cut it in half first. This. Okay, so what I'm gonna do Cut a lemon in half and I'm gonna squeeze it kind of over these sections just so that they don't turn brown while we're waiting to make the dressing. I think I'm gonna add this other half of onion too. I think our tomatillos and our peppers are done. They are nice and roasty and toasty. If I didn't have these, fresh ones, I could just open a jar of the salsa verde I made to make the same type of dressing. But when you've got fresh from the garden, you wanna make sure you use it up before it goes bad. So let's go ahead and pull this dressing together. I've been kind of thinking about how we're gonna pull this together. And I think it's gonna turn out really well. While I was waiting for the tomatillos to be done, I did cut up an onion for the chicken and some garlic for our dressing and for the chicken we're gonna cook in just a little bit. In our blender, we're gonna put our tomatillos and we're gonna make our dressing right in the blender. We've got our tomatillos, our random peppers, and if I was thinking, I should have probably put the garlic in the oven too to roast, but that's okay. We'll just have raw garlic in this dressing. To this, we're gonna put two cloves of garlic, some cumin, coriander, salt, some black pepper, just a drizzle of honey, so maybe two or three teaspoons, if that. Maybe a quarter cup of olive oil. Oh my goodness, this smells incredible, but we do need to give it a little taste test. That is so good, so good. I think it's right on point. I don't think we need to change anything to it. So what we're gonna do with our dressing is we're gonna pour it over our slaw, but I do wanna go ahead and get these avocados out of these shells here. So we're gonna have different textures in here. We're gonna have the creaminess from the avocado, the crunchiness from the onions and the cabbage. 
We're gonna have the spiciness from those peppers and the zinginess from the tomatillos. So I'm keeping the avocados on the top so I can pour the dressing over that to help prevent browning again. I'm gonna start with most of that dressing. And then I do need to season this with salt and pepper because the cabbage and onions don't have any seasoning on them. And that is a lot of cabbage. We wanna make sure everything is seasoned nicely. So we're just gonna mix up our coleslaw. I think I'm gonna go ahead and add the rest of the dressing. Okay, we are gonna taste test this. I wanna make sure I get a little bit of everything. It is gonna change flavor just a little bit because this dressing is warm and we are gonna chill this before we have it on the tacos. But we do kinda wanna know what the baseline flavor is we're working with. That is so good. That doesn't need any salt. It doesn't need anything, really. That's perfect. I'll taste it one more time before we serve it, just to make sure, like I said, when you chill things, the flavor does tend to change just a little bit. So I'm just gonna plop this right in the fridge, and we are gonna go ahead and prep our chicken for tonight. Before I prep the chicken to start cooking that, I decided to dice or slice up one more onion. It's a great way to have your chicken stretch by using onions and peppers when you cook with it. So that's what I decided to do. And then I'm gonna get some garlic prepped and ready to go to go into our chicken as well. I'm gonna use chicken thighs today for dinner, but you could use chicken breast if you wanted to kind of make up this recipe as well. I wanted to try to get all my knife work done before I cut up my chicken. So we have our garlic, our onions, and then I'm going to cut one more lemon and we'll finish our chicken with the lemon. So I can set this aside and we can now prep our chicken. I always like to use a plastic cutting board. I never use my nice wooden cutting boards when I am working with raw meat. And I do like to take the time to kind of cut off any excess fat or anything just so that we don't have a bite with that. That's not our favorite. So what I'm gonna do is I am gonna take the time to do that. And then I am going to slice, you know what, no, I'm gonna dice. I was trying to figure out if I wanted to dice or slice this chicken for tonight's dinner. I think we're gonna dice it into chunks. That way it will be bite size and easy to eat in our tacos. I'm so excited to have tacos tonight. We usually eat tacos on a regular basis, but it feels like it's been way too long since we have had any sort of taco or anything. And I love when I have a minute to make it a little bit more special by making different toppings like the coleslaw tonight. And that really didn't take any time. I don't always make homemade tortillas. Like I said, it's been a long time since I've made flour tortillas, but I am excited to give this new recipe a try and hopefully it's gonna be a winner for us tonight. But if it's not, I do have tortillas in the freezer and I can always pull out tortillas from the freezer, but I have a feeling, I have a feeling we're gonna enjoy these homemade tortillas. We're gonna cook our chicken right here and then we're gonna use the cast iron to make our tortillas. I wanna get the chicken going so that when our tortillas are done, we are ready to eat. I'm gonna put a little bit of olive oil in the bottom of our pot or pan. And then I did get out some seasonings. We have cumin, coriander. This is the powder that we made from the enchiladas. We freeze dried the solid bits and I thought that would be good in this. And I want this to be kind of chipotle forward. So we have chipotle powder, paprika. We're gonna put some honey in there again and salt. And then our tortilla dough is nice and soft. So we're gonna roll this out as soon as we get the chicken going. While our oil is heating up on our pan, I wanted to show you what I did down here. I mentioned I like to cut or cook my pumpkins or squash cut side up, but these are so big, they were so close to this heating element up here that I needed to flip it around. So I am cooking them cut side down just so that they don't burn because I don't want that flesh really, really close to that heating element. Woo, I think I let this get a little too hot. We're gonna get our chicken in there. It's gonna splatter.
while our chicken is cooking, we're gonna start on rolling out our tortillas. The recipe says that we should divide this into 16 equal pieces. So I'm trying to figure out the best way to do that. There's two, four, Okay, we have our pieces now, and then we are going to start rolling these out. I'm gonna put them in this bowl and I'm gonna cover each one so that we don't get, it, it doesn't dry out on us. And then we're supposed to roll these out to seven to eight inches in diameter. Circle is the goal, but it does not have to be a circle. We're gonna get it as close to that as we can. I am so happy with the texture of this dough. I think the amount of oil in it is what we need. If you have ever cooked those tortillas that you can get at the store that are raw, that you cook, this is kind of the texture or the feeling of it, the amount of oil. I think when I made tortillas in the past, now we haven't cooked them yet, so I can't say for sure. I don't think I had enough fat in them. So they were kind of dry. So I think this might be exactly what we need for some really yummy homemade flour tortillas, I hope. And yes, some of them are gonna be heart-shaped and that's okay. So I have three out. I need to check on our chicken. I'm gonna cover these so that they don't dry out on us. I'm really glad I took the time to do the laundry before we got started so that I had enough clean dish towels to do this. Our chicken is smelling fabulous. Oh yes, that's perfect. We got some nice color on it. So I'm gonna just flip it and I'm gonna let it brown on the other side. That right there is the color we're going for. I find tasks that are repetitive and you can just sit and focus and really pay attention to what or you're, you don't even necessarily have to pay attention to what you're doing. You're just kind of repeating the same thing over and over to be very satisfying. And I find it especially fun when we get to enjoy a really delicious dinner after all that hard work that was put in. When I do things like this, sometimes I listen to music, audiobook, watch my favorite YouTube videos, or even just listen to my own thoughts. With just a little practice, and you yourself can get a round tortilla as well. It only took, how many have I made? Five in order to get a round one? It's funny. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and heat up my cast iron. I think we're gonna start cooking these because I've got quite a few of them rolled out. Where should I roll them all out first? I don't know. Don't know. The fun of trying new things. I'm just gonna put these closer together so I can cover them up. I think the key to get them more round than kind of oblong is really to how you prep your dough before you get started. So making sure you start with something that's relatively round. That probably seems like common sense, but that's just something that kind of came to me as I was working through these. And it does help, I think, if you continue to rotate it. So we're back at the chicken. We've got some nice color starting on it. So now I'm going to add our onions. We have some really good browning on the side of this pan here. So we're going to use these onions to help scrape up my wooden spoon is so hot. I'm getting used to cooking with propane. So we're going to use these onions. The liquid in the onions is going to come out of them to kind of scrape up those yummy brown bits off the bottom of our pan. 
You know what I forgot to do? I forgot to salt and pepper our chicken. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. A little bit of salt. Pepper. We now have all of the tortillas rolled out, all 16 of them. I have them covered. And now we're gonna go ahead and finish up our chicken. The onions and chicken both have a nice color to them. You can see how those onions really stretch the chicken. You could do half onions, half peppers. I have added zucchini to my Mexican style chicken before. Whatever you want, you can definitely add vegetables to stretch your meat if you want. It's a bonus for me because I really like onions, so that is something that's really tasty. But sometimes I do, like I said, I'll chop up zucchini and we'll do some zucchini in there. I just added my garlic. We're gonna stir that and saute that just a little bit. And now we're gonna add the rest of our seasonings. So to our chicken, I'm gonna add some paprika. Chipotle is going to be the main flavor. Now, Chipotle has some heat to it, so you do want to be a little careful with it. Cumin, coriander, and our homemade enchilada taco seasoning. This has all those peppers and garlic and onions. Oh my goodness, it smells so good. I think I'm going to do about two tablespoons of that. We're going to mix this in. We're going to toast those spices. When you are cooking with spices, it's always good if you can toast them in a little bit of fat. A lot of the aromatics and flavor that comes in spices are fat soluble. And so it's really important to get the maximum flavor out of them is to toast them a little bit in a little bit of olive oil or whatever. And there's plenty of oil in here from sauteing the chicken. Just look how much liquid is coming out of this pumpkin. What I'm gonna do is use a stainless steel bowl with a colander on the top because we still want to drain some of this crazy amount of liquid out of this pumpkin. So I'm going to attempt to flip this if I can. It is so hot. Whew, okay. That is so liquidy. We're just gonna put our pumpkin puree in our colander and let it continue to drain off any excess liquid. This is probably the liquidiest pumpkin I have ever processed before, but it smells like fall and it smells so good. I can't wait to make all the yummy pumpkin recipes with this. I'm gonna take it and just kind of run it around We got an entire colander full of pumpkin. I have already drained this liquid out one time. Throughout the evening, I'm just gonna, as it cools, kind of push the pumpkin around and let different parts of it drain so that we can get a nice thick pumpkin puree. You really don't want all this extra moisture in there because if you bake with it, it's going to affect your recipes. If you were gonna make like a pumpkin curry with it, it wouldn't be a big deal but we're probably gonna do quite a bit of baking with this pumpkin. And then these scraps I'll go to the, will go to the chickens so that if there's any leftover pumpkin on it or anything, they'll be able to eat that off. And I just can't believe how much water came or liquid came out of this pumpkin. It's crazy. You can already see it starting to thicken up a little bit as it drains. So we're gonna let that cool and continue to drain. And then we are gonna get going on starting to cook these tortillas. We're gonna heat up our cast iron. So our tortillas have stayed nice and soft under those towels. They've probably been rolled out for, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes, 30 minutes or so. So that's good to know that you could pre-roll these out if you wanted to have like a Mexican themed party or something and you wanted to make these fresh for when people arrived. Okay, moment of truth. I'm a little nervous about this. I'm gonna get a towel. A fresh one. So as soon as these are cooked, we can put them in a towel. I also washed up a bunch of cilantro. Oh, that already looks like it's done. We're gonna put the cilantro in the meat and the slaw. Okay, this is looking 
like it's cooking up really nicely. You always see people when they're <laughs> making tortillas, they're like pushing on them when I watch videos, but I don't know if that is for a specific reason or not. I also need to shred up some cheese. So it is starting to cook a little bit. I'm getting a little bit of browning and I think I want a little bit more browning than that. This is probably a bad idea, but I am going to attempt to try to shred some cheese while I cook this tortilla. Okay, that's starting to get a little bit more color to it. And it's starting to puff up, okay? I think these are gonna be a good recipe. I don't wanna overcook them either because they will dry out, I think, if I overcook them. Okay, I'm happy with the color we're getting. And you can see that right here we've got a little bubble, so it's starting to puff up a little bit. Steam is coming out. I don't know if I'm doing the right thing by flipping them. I think I'm gonna call this one done. We're gonna grab another one. Oh, I'm gonna turn my cast iron down now because it's definitely heated up. The bubbles are coming a lot faster now because the cast iron, oh, we've already got some color on it. The cast iron's warmed up. Perfect. There we go, that should be enough cheese, plenty of cheese for dinner tonight, plus leftovers, because we're making enough to have leftovers. I think my cast iron's perfect temperature now because these are cooking up really quickly. I do need to run a knife through that cilantro. If you don't like cilantro, you can always use parsley as a substitute or just leave it out, but I can't get enough of it. We love it around here. Our tortillas are coming together nicely. They're super soft and pliable. I'm gonna turn my cast iron down again. Flour tortillas are Josh and I's favorite, so I'm gonna have him come in here and do a taste test. I did add just a little bit of water to our chicken to kind of create a little bit of a sauce and to scrape up any of the bits that were on the bottom of the pan. And we're just gonna add a handful of cilantro on top. Oh, can't forget to flip this. They're cooking so quickly. I want that cilantro to stay nice and fresh tasting. So I'm gonna turn the oven off, or the stove off. And then we're gonna add the juice of half a lemon. Oh goodness. Our tortilla's done, it's so bubbly. And now our chicken is done. I'm just gonna close this. Turn that off. I think that baking soda makes a big difference too because we're getting these big bubbles I've never gotten while making flour tortillas before. So I just talked Josh into tasting one of our tortillas. Do you want to go ahead and, here, I'll hand you one. Really had to pull my leg, <laughs> twist my arm to get me in here. So. Oh wow, I, was I supposed to eat already? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> try it. Yeah, Very shoot, good. it's hot probably. It's really good. It's wow. probably the best tortilla I've ever. Can I, can you rip me off a piece and I want to taste it? It's great I, I've never made really good flour tortillas before. Oh my goodness. Yeah, we're not going back to the other stuff. Did this take a lot of effort? Not really. Okay, perfect. <laughs> Friends, here, Josh, can you put another one on there for me? Mm -hmm. What's hot? You might use two hands. These are... I messed up. Yeah, that's okay. Incredible. Mm -hmm. They're so soft. I, I think the key is, Josh, I was telling them, because we're using an oil that's soft at room temperature, versus butter and lard is solid at room temperature. So these are really supple and... Makes sense. Yeah. Wow, that's really good. Thanks. Well, dinner's ready whenever you're ready. Well, I only have two more tortillas to cook and then dinner will be ready. Nice. I'm so excited I found this recipe, friends. This was so easy. You can do it. I'm gonna link the recipe down below. You could easily do this for a party too. If you had them all rolled out on the counter, and 
You could also use one of those griddles so that you could cook a lot at one time. And then everyone can have really yummy, fresh tortillas. You could have your meat in a crock pot. You could have all your sides out. Oh, by the way, I did taste test our coleslaw. It did need a little bit more salt, so I added that. And then you can see I added a bunch of cilantro, and this stuff is so good. So with the chicken, we've kind of got like a citrusy coleslaw, even though there's not that much citrus, but tomatillos are kind of citrusy. We've got a chipotle chicken with onions and deliciousness, fresh tortillas. Can you see that bubble on there? It's so pretty. Okay, that one's done. They are so hot when they come off the cast iron. This is the last one going in. So we have our coleslaw. We can put a little bit more cilantro on top if we want, our cheese, sour cream, and our homemade hot sauce. And dinner is put together. Plus we got a big old bowl of pumpkin. I have drained the liquid off this one time. I'm gonna let this cool. And once it's completely cool, I'll put it in the fridge and then I'll decide what we're gonna do with it. I don't really know exactly how I'm gonna preserve this up yet, if I'm gonna freeze dry it, freeze it, I don't know. I will bring you along the whole process. And like I said, I do have a couple more winter squash that I can preserve up. But for now, we're gonna start with that. And we are gonna eat a delicious dinner. I'm so excited it's Taco Tuesday. We just turned it up a little bit. And after being sick and having three soups in a row, I'm ready to have some delicious tacos. I'm so excited for this dinner, friends. Josh is putting together his taco right now. I put on a plate his tortillas and his meat, and then he was going to put the condiments on. I was like, oh, the condiments are on the island. And he was grabbing the squash spoon. He's like, what's the deal with the squash? I was gonna play along if I had to. <laughs> He's so, um, accepting, accepting <laughs> of any sort of like culinary experiments that I tried that he would have, he would have put it on there. Potentially begrudging, <laughs> but I without much complaining. So let me show you what his taco looks like. I want to say thank you for taking time out of your day to spend time with me in my kitchen and my laundry room. We got our laundry done. So tomorrow when I wake up, I don't have to think about laundry, which I'm really excited about. It is dinner time. I hope you are having a fabulous day. The recipes will be linked down in the description box. I'll pop a couple more videos here you can go enjoy between now and my next upload. Hope you guys are having a fantastic day and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye friend.